one of these supporting mods that is a must for a forced induction engine, whether it's a turbocharger or supercharger, is a wideband sensor. So a wideband sensor will tell you the air to fuel ratio of your exhaust, and that's going to let you know if you're robbing your engine of power or if you're in a danger zone for your engine as well because you could have a catastrophic failure. I'm going with the Innovate because that's what the forum said to. So follow along here. It shouldn't be too hard. A little bit of wiring, a little bit of wrenching, and we should be good to go. Please don't let my mistake go to waste. If you're going to install a wideband sensor, do all this before you put the supercharger in or else it's going to be kind of a pain to remove everything. So remove that U-pipe, remove your throttle body if you made my mistake, but otherwise if you didn't make that mistake, you can find your O2 sensor uh, on the downpipe right before the midpipe. Mine was a 22 millimeter socket that needed to be used to break it loose. Use some penetrating oil to help you out. It can be tricky. So break it loose and remove it before you even start doing the wire for your new wideband because if you do all the wiring and you can't get this out, well, you're in a world of hurt. I do apologize for the buzzing. That's the cicadas. Another wonderful present the year 2020 has given us. So the first step, like I said, is make sure you can get your old O2 sensor out, because if you can't, everything else is worthless to us. But if you can, the first step after that removal is finding a source of voltage for both the sensor and the display. You need a 12 volt sensor for both of them, or a 12 volt line for both of them, that is on only when the ignition is on or else you'll end up draining your battery. So I'm looking under here, I'm about to go grab my digital multimeter and try to find us something that fits that 12 volts when the ignition is on only. We need to find the actual wire that's going to give us our 12 volts that's required. And I looked it up online, it's hard to tell, but the wire we're looking for is mainly blue with a small black stripe. So hopefully that will give us the 12 volts we need when the ignition is turned on. So I have a voltmeter set up right here. I have the two leads. One's already attached to the wire, and this one will touch to the ground momentarily here. So let me reorganize myself here, and I'll show you that when we turn the key to the on position, hopefully we have 12 volts, and then when we turn it off, there's nothing else. So the key is in but we are not in the ignition or accessory setting and the digital multimeter is reading zero. One end of the lead is connected to our wire and our ground lead is not currently connected. Turn the car to the accessory stage so we do have power running through everything. This still should read zero, which it does, and now I'm gonna take my ground lead to help us with the circuit here and let's see here. Let me get a good, yeah, there we, okay. So, there's the place we can ground it on. We're getting about the 12 volts that we want, which means this wire will work for us. So to power the sensor and gauge, we're gonna hook into the cigarette lighter slash radio stereo circuit. And that normally has a 15 amp fuse, but I don't have any of that sound. So you can notice the lacking there, center console lacking. So we're going to pull that 15 amp fuse, I already went ahead and did that, right there. And we're going to replace it with a 5 amp fuse, which is what is recommended for the wideband sensor and such. So if you have the stereo and things, it's going to be a little more complex for you to find a 5 amp uh, fuse for yourself. Now we're going to talk about the wiring for the LC2, and it's kind of like the Power Rangers. Everyone has their own role here, but the good news is there's only four wires for us to worry about. The red one is the power. That's our 12-volt source. That's going to be connected to the blue and black wire we just showed you. The black wire is the ground, so find an official Mazda ground point. You may need to extend the wire a little bit, but it'll be worth it. The brown wire itself is going to go to the stock ECU signal. So we'll splice that back in to the wire that we cut in the engine bay because we need a signal going to the actual car's ECU so the car knows, knows what's going on inside of the exhaust gas in terms of the air to fuel ratio. And last but not least is the yellow Power Ranger. This is going to be connected to our actual gauge so that we can read and see the 
number or ratio for the air to fuel ratio inside the exhaust. All right, so if you take a look there, there's a blue and black wire attached to our red power wire for the LC2. And then the black negative wire is currently soldered to, I know, all right, this all wire had in terms of color, a red wire, which is fed up and through the actual firewall. And sorry for the motion sickness, it will momentarily be grounded right there on the cam cover. So here, the red wire is right there, it's the stripped one. It will be going, let me just put this down, it will be going right here underneath here for our negative terminal. Now that the LC2 has power, we have to calibrate it. Hopefully this thing flashes a bunch of Morse code signals at us, and we'll proceed if that happens. Again, not turning the car on, just going to accessories. Oops, sorry about the door there. That's a good sign, we have power. All right, it's supposed to flash right at us. That was a good start. We have to let this go for 30 seconds. So let's see if you can hold your breath for that long. Plug your nose, cheaters. Boom. All right, that's all I got. All right, so it says a minimum of 30 seconds at the flashing, and then we can power it down. So that's been at least 30 seconds. Turn it off. With the LC2 power down, we're gonna to start to make the physical connection. So the LC2 is gonna get connected to this extension wire, and this extension wire is gonna get connected to the actual cable itself. Same deal, car is off. We're not gonna start, we're just gonna go to accessories. We should be hopefully seeing a bunch of green flashes this time. So that's good. You got green to start with, and then it's uh, next up, it's gonna take about 30 to 60 seconds. I'll fast forward it because I am still ahead from trying to hold my breath before. We'll see how it goes. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are solid green, and we know green means good to go. So the sensor is calibrated this time. At this point, you're going to power down everything. Don't do undo any of your wires. Just turn everything off. No disconnecting the LC2, but you can, again, once you've powered off, you can go ahead and disconnect the actual O2 sensor. That is okay to do. Now, because my Miata has been, for lack of better terms, customized, I have these two grommets available to me to feed things through, so I fed the O2 sensor through the available grommet. You probably won't have one there, so find something that works for you, but that one is the best one and stays out of the wheel well, and then all we do is take this, and that will go back down there into the O2 bung, and we're one step closer to having this thing ready to go. Again. Sorry for the red wires, but let me catch you up to date. So the new O2 sensor is installed, but now we need the signal from our O2 sensor to get to our ECU. So what we have done already is chopped the old O2 sensor wire. So this is the original stock wire connector with now a bare end, and that bare end is going to connect to this red wire down here. Again, sorry, I only have red wire. That red wire, if we follow it, back to the interior to the LC2 that red wire is this one right here and it looks like orange I assure you it's red that is going to connect to the brown output right here because that brown output and that sensor are going to connect the new O2 sensor and the stock ECU I swear we're almost done I know you're getting tired of listening to me last up is the actual gauge itself so to do this good news it's just four wires so just like the O2 sensor, the red is for power, so we'll hook that back into the blue-black. The black is for ground, so we'll attach it to ground. And I believe the white wire is going to go to the yellow wire of the O2 sensor. After that, we should be good to go. Last step is to connect this into your actual gauge, and then pray to who, or whatever it is that you do, that everything works 
the first time. All right, let's see if it works. Well, first, hopefully the Miata works because I've been having some issues with that lately. Well, let's take a look at this. Ooh, that's good. Got some numbers flashing. And Miata. Hey, Miata works too! Yay! Now, will this read? Because it shouldn't be 7.5. 7.5 is a really bad number for this thing to be reading. Come on, we want about 14.7 is the ideal one, so give me some good news here, please. I'm sorry, it's a little bit glary. All right, air fuel 7.5, change over. 12, woo, climbing, climbing. All right, 13. Ooh, sorry for the bad glare. There's the 14 point. Uh oh, 14 point. Yeah. So we're, we're in the area. We're a little bit lean, but I will work on that. So that's how you install one of these things.